Okay, welcome. We welcome today to Designing Hollywood. Our guest is a wonderful, wonderful, fantastic designer, Judiana Makovsky, and my co-host, also <laughs> a costume designer, Mandy Line. Well, thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Mm -hmm. And before this, I fainted when Judiana walked in, but I picked up myself. <laughs> I looked okay. I'm ready for this, Marilyn. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm happy to be here with both of you. You're amazing. Yes. Oh, and, I, you sweet. know, when I started to read, because I wanted to figure, oh, what are we going to talk about? She's got so much, you know, <laughs> from th this group of films mm -hmm. to that group. I mean, you've always... It amazed it's so me. funny to me. I feel like I haven't done anything yet. I mm. you that's funny because here's a I list of your nominations of your awards. It, it's so, so yes. funny to me because I feel like I haven't done any of the things I really want to do yet. So <laughs> I, it's, you know, but that's the attitude. Mm. You still got so much more to do. Yeah, yeah. I'm never when, retiring. Uh, when <laughs> I the, the first time I actually said had uh, words with you and mm -hmm. met you, I was doing Mystery Men. And, I remember that. And I brought mm -hmm. Jeffrey Rush. Mm -hmm. I brought Jeffrey Rush to uh, to the Beverly Hills. That was Hotel. your guest? And wow, there that's that. when I found out that your agent mm -hmm. was a friend of mine. Oh really? Yeah. How funny. Yeah. He went to school with my husband at the time. Yeah. I had no idea. I did yeah, not I don't didn't. remember that part, but I remember meeting you for and the first time because I was like, Oh, that's Marilyn Vance. Oh, I love oh, that. But when you, I love that. <laughs> she was on she walked up to the podium mm -hmm. and she's standing there mm -hmm. like with her hands like here. I can't explain. It was so charming. <laughs> And like she said, terror. you know, gripping, gripping. <laughs> Absolutely. What's terror. a girl like me <laughs> from New Jersey? Well, no, that's always been my attitude. <laughs> doing, I mean, I'm, you know, she mm -hmm. was overwhelmed with. Definitely overwhelmed. And she mm -hmm. was so adorable that oh. I couldn't believe. I think it was just terror. I was a so happy to. Terror. So I'm in the house with two mm -hmm. East Coast women, right? Yes. Okay, okay, this is going to get real. <laughs> this is going to get real. Definitely I love this. And what award were you accepting, or what was it? A, a it she, been, from the Costume guild. Designers yeah, guild. The guild. Awesome. Yeah, Wonderful. and this and it's the first and only time at the, that time that I ever went to any of those, because uh, I was always in Chicago. Oh, or, it, I mean, you know. it's hard to fly back for this. So. I, try, right. I try to, Yeah, because they're so fun. Sometimes I do. It depends, you know. Well, it depends nominated. what award if I'm, I'm nominated, but <laughs> if she's also, awarded, you know, right? I, if it's someone I know or you totally. know who's getting an award, I'll fly back from wherever I am, yeah, you know, yeah. to support. I love Cause that. Because it's scary standing up there <laughs> giving a speech. I, I, we're we're not used to giving speeches. That's not what we do. Right. You know, so. You just create everything that everyone watches. But that's true. No, you put the right. camera yeah. on you and all of a sudden. I, I hate it. I mean, I'm not a person, as we were talking about before, don't do social media. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I, I, I don't like it about me at all. I like it about the work. That's how too. Uh -huh. Yeah. I just like it about the work. And then I don't need, personally well, need all that other I feel that stuff. I feel that I feel... It's mm -hmm. all about the work with me. Exactly. I can't honestly mm -hmm. say, you know, because every story I have is linked to mm, a real, true. when I yeah. was working on something. Oh, my yes. God, this happened. Absolutely. You yeah. know, but that's how I, mm -hmm. you know, deal with it, actually. Yeah. Well, when you're working, you're so involved. Every little. I mean, yeah. you're, it's a 24-7, It's hard you know, thing that realize. you just can't. Concentrate on much else once it's you're working. It's almost like method, like actors that yeah. get so into it. We get so mm -hmm. engrossed that I'll find myself going to like mm -hmm. CBS and going, "Oh my god, the earring will be great." I'm like, well, "You're exactly. not even on the show anymore." <laughs> man. What are you doing? Well, so. it's like you know. I mean, I'm a, I'm a paper hoarder, a research hoarder, and Ooh, you know, yeah. I I save everything. Going well, I don't know what I need this for, but I might need it someday. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I need it for something. You know, everything we see is you know, I'm that's how brain everything work. is useful. I, I think mm -hmm. so too. Yeah. I agree. But her, do you you know her background? Do you know Judiana's mm -hmm. background? Um, maybe I've studied her just a little bit. <laughs> maybe a little bit obsessed. Um, I would love funny. to hear how mm -hmm. to get into how she began. I mean, maybe I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I won't pretend I. Don't I think know everything. yeah. Well, mm -hmm. she fell into from college, Jane yes, Greenwood. I did. I was very lucky that. Um, when I, I went to undergraduate at the Art in School of the Art Institute of Chicago, which at that point owned Goodman Theater School of Drama, and oh, okay. I was very sort of calculated because I knew what I wanted to do. I always wanted to be a costume designer. That you knew. Was, no one's ever said that on my in my oh, interviews. I've known at all. since no I've been five years old. Knew. My five. mother told me, 
I was one of those horrible <gasps> children who performed at the Metropolitan Opera. I was in the <laughs> ballet and the children's chorus from the time wow. I was five till I was 18. And I was apparently much more interested what went on backstage. That's and I was yeah. always like, they were like, where is that child? She has to go on. She's watching. Where's that kid? The <laughs> she's, she's moving, the, watching them move the scenery or she's watching <gasps> them in the costume <gasps> shop or she's, you know, go find her and get her on. So, you know, I and my, I used to sit in the audience at the old Met. <laughs> wow. That's how old I am. And even in the new Met and look at the curtains as the dress rehearsals and go, oh. how many costumes could you make out of that fabric? You know, and I would like <laughs> everything to me was so cool. about Jeez. what would go on stage. And, you know, I love the set design. I love the lighting design. So I always knew I wanted to be something. Your in brain just worked like that, yeah. the connection. Yeah. Of the, From the minute I was in that you. world, I was wow. absolutely intrigued. And it's funny because I don't have anyone else in my family in that the was, world. That was no. the next thing. Mm -hmm. I just got lucky. Uh, well, it wasn't lucky. My father died when I was very young. Yeah. And my mother was a musician. And her best friend was a harpist whose husband was the head timpanist at the Met. And he said, keep your children occupied. Maybe they should try out for mm. the children's chorus or the Smart. ballet. And luckily, my brother was in the children's chorus first. He was older than I was. And I, well, then it was the boys' chorus. And I was in the ballet. And then literally, I ended up going in both. But once I was in there, I was, that was it for me. I just, and it was never like I really liked performing because mm -hmm. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be, be there. Yeah. And I loved yeah. the people and the personalities. The and, you know, it was so different than my life. That's why you guys get life. along. You love, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 I, I love yeah. the yeah. crazy I personalities. It. I thought that they were normal. <laughs> that's that's like, exactly why we're, but that's so, it. Yeah. Crazy costume designers. Exactly. And, well, just every personality. The True. stage managers, the, the opera singers, you know, they were the stars, the diva. Wow. I mean, it was fascinating to me, and I just loved it. So my mother said I always knew what I wanted to do. And so when I went what a to gift for college, a too. Yeah, 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 I was lucky that I got into the Art Institute because they own Goodman School of Drama. But I believed, and still, you need a background in art, art history, painting, drawing. It's not just about clothes. Mm -hmm. That's the I last agree. part of it. You need the theater background Did or you hear how that, to read students? a play. Did she you hear is, that? No, she is you know? so... Totally I mean, I think you need to. Yeah, and I think you need to learn how to read a play or a screenplay, how to interpret it, how to talk about it. You know, all of that stuff comes before you actually design the anything. So, huge, yeah. um, I was very calculated that that's where I wanted to go to school, and was lucky enough to get in. And so I majored at the Art Institute, and then minored at uh, Goodman. And got to work on the plays at Goodman when Gregory Mosier, which some of us will remember, Gregory. worked. Gregory, oh, was oh my the gosh. director, um, you know, I worked in the, the box office. He worked right. in the box office at Goodman wow. Theater back then. Oh and um, through that, I um, was sent to the very first portfolio review in Ooh. New York when it wasn't mm. even a big thing. It was in yeah. an office, and there, I met Ming Cho Lee, the head of Yale School of Drama. And he looked at me, my work and said, wow, this is really amazing. And he said, what are you doing here? You're an undergraduate. You're not supposed to be here. Yeah. This is for graduate students. And I said, I don't know. School sent me. Wow. Yeah. So he said, well, you're going to You were always in Yale. places you weren't supposed to be. I love this. It was this. all luck. And he invited me to go to Yale. So oh, yeah, well, that's for graduate school. Jane. And once I got to, to Yale, I... I fell in love with Jane Greenwood, I have to admit. This Can we I give a little background on Jane Greenwood for students that maybe don't know? Jane Greenwood is one of the premier Broadway, opera, theater, ballet designers and has done film. And you know her, also. too? Yes. I, her reputation, yes. if nothing I mean, she else. Was, we I called her the Susan Lucci of, Os of uh, <laughs> yeah. Tonys for years. She finally, finally. won a toner, yeah. Tony after, I don't know how many, 18 nominations or something. Oh, wow. And she also got a, a career achievement from Tony. And she is the most remarkable teacher and designer. And I gravitated to her as soon as I got to Yale and was lucky enough as right. soon as I left to go right to work for her. Did you, you pursue were lucky. that? Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you make that a point? Like, I'm going to work with her. I'm going to intern no, or whatever. No. It just connected. No, it just her, connected. She keeps yeah. falling into yeah. her life. No, yeah. exactly. I, you know, I mean, a lot of the movie business is, well, putting Timing. yourself in places that you need to be. I'm not a very aggressive person. And actually, at that time, I was quite shy. Yeah. I was very, very shy when I was younger. But I just knew that this is where I want to be. And because... I mean, I admired Jane so much. I tell the story a lot, but yeah. when I was in 
maybe eighth grade. I wow. had a class trip to Stratford in Connecticut, and there was a play, I think it was The Merry Wives of Windsor, that had the most amazing costumes mm-hmm. I'd ever seen. And they were all made like um, Renaissance woodcuts. They were wow. all completely painted black wow. and white. And, w- and or- they were amazing. the most amazing Elizabethan right. clothes I'd ever seen. And I never forgot it, and they were designed by Jane Greenwood. See, wow. that connection, but that gut intuitive and knowing. to think that one day I would actually work with her and really become part of her family. Mm-hmm. She has become mm-hmm. a second mother to me. Wow. Her daughters are in the business. Her daughter, wow. Sarah, was my assistant oh, really? for a long time. And that. Sarah Edwards is now a big designer in New York. Yes, 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 yes. She's like my sister. And her sister, Kate, was my wardrobe supervisor. Oh, wow. For a lot of time. So, you know, sometimes That's... nepotism is good. Nepotism <laughs> right. is right. I have right. no Existing. problem with nepotism. I don't either. Um, like, but, honestly. you know, because they're talented. Yeah. I mean, they're both... Sarah's really talented. She did, she's my assistant well, on quite family. a few movies. Yeah. Oh um, so, you know, I kept it in the family, but it was more than a uh, professional relationship after a while. It, it's very familial. That's such a gift, too, yeah. and to be able to hold on to that through your career. You know, there's all the things yeah. that we go through that you connected yeah. and you stayed and she's, that way. she's a remarkable woman, and she's a yeah. remarkable teacher. Right. I mean, That's what I hear. She has an amazing yeah. reputation. Yeah. I mean, I was yeah. lucky when I was at Goodman Theater that there is a remarkable teacher, Virgil Johnson, who I think is still teaching at Northwestern. I don't, he was an amazing teacher. So I, like I said, I wanted to go to the schools that really taught what I needed to know. Even though, you know, my first degree is really in in fine arts. My my degree is definitely Mm. in painting and drawing, which I never do anymore. (laughs) I was just going to ask you, during this time down, Uh, have you even... No. But now... I've cleaned my house. (laughs) (laughs) Not to interrupt this part of the story, how did you wind up with Uh, Melina Cannonero? Well, that's another kind of in the right place in the right time, Mm -hmm, I suppose. mm -hmm. I... um, Milena had come to New York to do her first opera at the Met. Vanessa, uh, Vanessa, I think? And everyone watching, if you yeah. do not know this name, yeah. you need to Google yes, this. Yes, if you it, don't know who Milena is, Milena I, I really Canada. should be in the business. Yes. I think exactly. I have her name tattooed somewhere exactly. on my arm at some yeah. point. Um, and she was an idol of mine. And I got a phone call um, from this woman with an Italian accent saying, I got your name from Anthony Powell. Oh, now, Anthony whoa. Powell is my hero, oh, right, who right. I had never met, by the way. Oh, wow. And he gave me your name and uh, said that I should hire you to help me at the Met. Um, Where did this and, connection How did you get uh, Well, he is best friends with Jane Greenwood, who had been talking about yeah, her I'd student, say, this yeah. student. And the sad thing was um, I was designing a show at Indiana Rep, and I couldn't do it. And I hung up the phone. I couldn't work with her. Yeah. And I hung up the phone and went, my career is over. Because <gasps> I always wanted to do film. Even yeah. when I was at Yale, I was one of the few not so interested in doing so much theater. Ballet and opera, maybe. But right. I wanted to do film. But yeah. it, that is not a school that teaches film. Right. But yes. I didn't know how I was going to get in film. I didn't know anybody in film. Except Jane, who had designed some films. And the mm-hmm. discussion was a, yeah. you know, wasn't a big discussion. No. Too. So when... You know, and I was like, wow, how did Anthony Powell get my phone number? I was just like, so cool. but anyway, she called me and I was so upset. And then when she came back to New York to do her first film in America, well, it wasn't her first film in yes. America, but her first big period film, she did Cotton Club, she called me again. Wow. And, and I was had like, you kept in right? touch no. or you just let, no. it, let it happen? let it happen. Wow. And I met her. Reputation. I'll never forget it. We right. talk about this all the time because... I remember meeting her at the F Stop Cafe on 19th Street in the <laughs> in the photography district, and it was a horrifically torrential, rainy, horrible day. And um, she was actually there first, and I came in and sat down, and mm. she looked at me because I thought it was an interview, basically. Yeah, yeah. And she said, "You're wearing the same raincoat I'm wearing. <gasps> it's a Dutch <laughs> Army raincoat from like the salvi- you know, from yeah. a thrift store." <laughs> and she said, "I'm hiring you." <laughs> But that's such a costume designer thing to say. Like that, it was bizarre. We were wearing the exact same like vintage raincoat from you know an Army Navy store, and but we, Milena and I, immediately had a um, rapport. Mm -hmm. Um, When she started Cotton Club, I had to finish. I was working with Jane Greenwood on a 
Kennedy's miniseries for IT, I think it was ITV or it was on PBS here or no maybe it was NBC I don't remember so long ago with Blair Brown and Martin Sheen and I couldn't be there right away so she had another assistant start with her but the minute I came on Milena and I that just connection. clicked and we have this very similar taste mm -hmm. and we like I mean I was just I had never seen clothes like the clothes that she brought in Gosh, from Europe, from right. Tirelli and, you know, all over the world, and my joy. I mean, she was just like, the look on your face. And yeah. every day we'd play dress up, and we'd play with these yeah. and dress the men. Did she call you out the look? She can tell that you were like... Oh, I was just like, wow. this is amazing. She's and, game. Yeah, But, exactly. you know, I was, like I said, I was very shy, and I'll never forget my first day on the job. Mm. I went to... Um, the studios in um, in Long Island City, yeah. and I arrived, and she goes, oh, Richard and I are flying to California to get some clothes, so, oh. you know, Francis, go introduce yourself to Coppola, and his office is over there, and they're doing um, some screen tests <gasps> of, like, a bunch of actresses, oh. and there's a couple dresses over there, and, you know, help them with hair and makeup and the dresses, and go, just go, and they left. <laughs> there we I'm go. Like, oh, my uh -huh. God. There's your so, test. <laughs> I go and introduce knock on this door, this little girl, and he was so kind to me. He was so, come in, have an espresso, I'll make you pasta, whatever you like. Uh -huh. And then I'm in this, you know, bathroom with leading ladies like Sigourney Weaver <laughs> putting clothes on trying to do their hair with my comb and two bobby pins. <laughs> and it was it was hilarious. And I guess, I guess, oh, I guess this is what movies are like. Right, no. And you and get thrown you, in. Yeah. All of a well, yeah. if you can't adapt, you can't do it. You can't just you dive tell in? when you have an assistant yeah. too yeah. and when you have a good one? You're yeah. just yeah. like... Exactly right. You uh -huh. know, if they're game for anything and are not terrified by it, and it's like, well, okay, I guess this is what I have to do today. And, you know, but I was terrified. You know, it was you my first day. It, right? yeah. it was like, my first day. I'd only done a couple days on other films. First I'd day. Never, you, you've had you know, some background getting yeah. in a really But it was just, incredible. I mean, it is about, you know, I mean, it, it's about people recognizing that they like your work mm -hmm. and having mm -hmm. generous people help you. I mean, isn't that the key? If you're so yeah. blessed to have that person, you, That's you true. have. To, uh -huh. If someone sees your work and they're willing to help you, you have to get your work seen, you know. But it's also, I find, you know, the people that I've sort of fostered. Yeah. If people are too aggressive, I don't like it. Yeah, there's a fine line. There's a right fine line totally, about totally. you know, I putting agree. yourself out yeah. there and being annoying. Wait, so, I say the same yeah, thing. Yeah. What I have interns yeah. ask me, I always say, just don't be annoying. They're like, yeah. what does that mean? I'm all yeah. sit with it. Y yeah, just think not of, yes, means. Exactly. Well, I work with very difficult personalities. Yeah. My producers were just oh. incredibly tough. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. They were, it's almost like, are they in the film business? Or? Well, what? Yeah. <laughs> <No> <laughs> you know? Well, but, I mean, that's know, a testament I mean, to that's, your drive, But that too. is also part of our job. I know. Navigating. We are very political. Uh -huh. Very. Very political. I mean, you have to... You have to have people skills to do yeah. our job, and you have to know when to back off and when to be aggressive and when to never give in. There, But there are times when, yeah. you know, is this the fight I want to have or is this not the fight I want to have? That, isn't that you the know? truth? And you have that internal discussion yeah, as you're speaking to them. Because if I give in on this, I'm going to get what I really want later. But and, you and, don't but know that, this until you're doing it. Yeah, you don't know it till you... Until yeah. you see it and yeah. do it yourself. Exactly. You're involved with that. Yeah. And suddenly it's yeah. a whole... Oh you know, and God. it's also not yeah. even having other designers who like you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. my first jobs were in television. And, um, well, I was on a film, Reversal of Fortune. Awesome. And I really kind of got that because the producer was a producer I'd worked with on a TV thing yeah. as an assistant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, so, you know, it's, it's, it's finding the people that you can you know, work with and admire and who yeah. really believe in what you do. And there aren't a lot, yeah. you know. When you find people, those people that trust well, you in your decision and you open up their minds to see it a different yeah, way, like exactly. yeah, that, that but, gratitude But it is, so you're not always going to get what uh, you want. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, it's so true. you know, <clears throat> you, you come to a realization, particularly in film, it's not about you. You're not in front of that camera. Mm -hmm. Somebody else is in front of that mm -hmm. camera. And I always tell students... You know, when something doesn't work or someone doesn't like it, it's your job to come up with something even better and not even flinch. Correct. And you can't, you know, once in a while you know something is correct and you're really going to fight for it and often you'll win. But often 
it doesn't matter if it's the right thing if they're not going to wear it or yeah. the producer producer or director doesn't want that. I love, and you yeah. just have to keep going at it till you find it. You know when you're in those fittings mm -hmm. and you know when, and I always yeah. tell people, when you have actors touching mm -hmm. themselves too much and they're uncomfortable, your mm -hmm. job is to peripheral, right. see a change yeah. and be like, and just suggest it because at the end sure. of the day, we both know, we all know that if they're not comfortable, the second they go on camera, well, yeah. they're going to want to switch it. Well, it's also, it, it, I, you know, it hinders, like it, I said, you're not in front of the camera. They're in front it. of the camera. Mm -hmm. We're there to help them. We're there to facilitate mm -hmm. so I think you have to learn when to back off and also it's an art to know when something's not working and you it's have to recognize it before anybody else will, it does yeah. you know there could be something that I love and I had it in my mm. head that I've made right. and I'll get in the right. fitting and go <gasps> no uh, isn't that uh, you the know? thing make and it so just doesn't yeah. it, it's not right and yeah. I think it behooves you to not dig your heels in <laughs> I think yeah. that just, comes from experience. Yeah, just I think it does that too. you just you see it's not working and how can you make it better or just get rid of it and start again. And I, you know, I drive my crew crazy because I'm like, you know, I, I am the procrastinator in chief. They will all tell well, you, you want that. It to be perfect. I, you want yeah, it to and, be and I know Milena's like that too. We, we always think we can make it better. We just keep going at it and at it and at it. But I do know when the moment comes when you actually have to make a decision and get a get it made or get it on camera, but I will wait till that very last minute, God. which drives everyone The crews insane. go nuts, right? Because yeah. you're looking yeah, for yeah. something, looking for something, and you know yeah. in your gut, you're yeah. like, we gotta build this. They're yeah. like, build it? Yeah. It's the night before, and but you're like, But also, they're me. like, often, they will know that I it's know coming. it's not the last D moment. Totally, right. they are steps ahead That of I can <laughs> still keep playing with this, or I know I want something, a different technique to do this. We've done this. You know, when you're working on superhero movies, okay, I've done that technique on four movies. I want something new. I want something different. I'm tired of it. It's in every movie now. Can we do something else? What are new techniques in, you know, cutting or laser cutting? Or I want to see different. I what just, you, you know. did with uh, the Winter Soldier with mm. the different fabrics yeah. that looked heavy. Right. But weren't. Well, that's like almost that's all those costumes that's amazing. are, you know. The fabric I mean, itself. I can't say that any of those costumes are comfortable. Right. But we try to make them as comfortable as they can be. Well, they can act. I always say, you can yeah. act comfortable. Mm -hmm. You're an actor. Well, there they is laugh. that. But it's <laughs> no, also, <I'm> <laughs> you know, I mean, I, you know, movement is important. Oh, it, yeah. You know, when yeah. I did The Winter Soldier, which was the first Marvel. I mean, I did X-Men years ago, but with Marvel itself. Um, the first thing the Russo brothers said to me was movement is the most important thing to me. Smart. And yeah. luckily for me, I had the world's greatest cutters and the world's greatest artisans and crews and craftsmen well, who could make that happen for me <laughs> and for the actors. But incredible. it was, we have many, many fittings on these things because if the actor can't move, what's To refit, point? yeah. You know, yeah. Then they're just going to put green dots on it and CG it. So you might as well, you know, it always looks better when it's real. Speaking but of you, you really have learned so much in the technology I ha of yeah. doing this. And I bring in people realize. who know you more just, than me. Yeah. That's the, that's the and trick. You, yeah, <laughs> that's of course. Yeah. And, and yeah. I'm happy to, um, you know, use their knowledge. I, I, yeah. I'm not afraid of, you know, assistants coming in who know more about certain things. Than I no, do. my gosh. And going to different countries yeah. and shooting their exactly. different ways of doing exactly. things. It just makes exactly. you a better costume designer. You had touched on the mm -hmm. color green. Oh, yes. Speaking <laughs> of green, great expectations. With uh, This is just a little bit of your mm -hmm. middle of your career, and we're going to jump to the, ex <laughs> you know, everyone I loves the marble. Tell you, great expectations is my favorite film I've ever done. Okay. Oh, I, I love I have to that. tell you, I saw I you that. speak <laughs> when I first got into the industry. Really? And the way that mm -hmm. I watched films... Mm -hmm. After Great Expectations, I think, if anything, it annoyed anyone I went to the theater with because <laughs> mm -hmm. I knew that there was a reason. Gwyneth Paltrow was in green. Mm -hmm. Ethan Hawke was in blue. And I'm looking at all mm -hmm. of this. I'm like, there's a reason behind this. And um, the director, Alfonso Cuaron, yes. is that his last name? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was reading last night. He said um, it was uh, an engrossing stylistic technique mm -hmm. to throw that in the mm -hmm. minds of us but mm -hmm. not overwhelm us. Can you talk about that discussion and that Absolutely. decision to do yeah. that? So apparently when Beautiful. I met um, Alfonso, which was another story of a friend of 
crash on the producer us, yeah. was a friend of Sharon Stone, and Sharon Stone liked was me so much Jane. that no, and, you know, <laughs> and introduced me and, to <gasps> to the Amy Efron, who is now my best friend, and yeah. she uh, was the producer on this movie. And Sharon said, "You have to meet this girl that's working with me now, and she needs to do your movie." So there's anyway. no more Seven Degrees of Kevin no. Bacon. It's no. now Seven Degrees <laughs> exactly. of Juliana Mukowski. This is what we're doing. Well, yeah. I think we all have that, but I was, that's you know, how I it got was. Into. Um, yeah. I met Alfonso, and he looked me straight in the face, and he mm-hmm. said, I want the movie to be all green. Just like that? Just like that. Okay. And I thought about it for a minute, <laughs> and I went, okay, green can be cool or warm and be Smart. like black and white. Okay. And I find that really intriguing. I said, I don't think you want to do it all green because then it'll be a cartoon. Mm, so I mm-hmm. think you need to add black or white or something reality. Like you don't want the little girls in a green dress and green stockings and green shoes. You need you're to right, have the reality right. yeah. of a black shoe and real tights. And you're going to have sets with wood floors. So I think you have to continue Ooh, And that. those sets? Yeah, oh. yeah. Bo was amazing. Bo Welsh. You guys work together but so great. I looked and said, I'm very intrigued by that. I find that really difficult but also makes it easier it, it limits your choices so kind of and like, yeah. he said you are the first designer I've talked to who didn't say to me you can't use green on camera people look bad in it and I went why would the, any yeah. color looks good on camera if you have a good DP right. I mean exactly. I, I don't really understand exactly. that but yeah. that is an old myth that green doesn't look good on people well but I saw stuff. a quote from Gwyneth mm-hmm. Paltrow mm-hmm. saying until you mm-hmm showed her how mm-hmm. to work it. Yeah. Her oh, first instinct was mm-hmm. green doesn't work on yeah. me. And in the fitting, she literally quoted, she said, yeah. sh- you made it mm-hmm. such a pleasant feeling Well, for it was her. also, when I started the film, I had... I wanted to be am- this. Well, didn't we all? Um, <laughs> I, I had an amazing <laughs> relationship with Alfonso, with Bo, and particularly Chivo, Emmanuel Luzbecki, who was the DP. He's the... Brilliant, brilliant. I cannot tell you how long he played with me. We tested every green color and how he was going to shoot it Mm. and what kind of film, in what environment, to get, like, the girls' uniforms, the perfect green on Little Princess. Or So by the time we got to Great Expectations, I knew how he shot and what greens would work. And Great Expectations, actually, was, again, Alfonso said to me, I want it all in green. And I said, hmm... We have to use a few other colors because we're going to be at the beach and the ocean is blue. So mm. I think we use green and blue. I think blue Even jeans. Even the jeans. Yes, smart. Blue the jeans. jeans yep. Very clever. Which yeah. can be not a bright blue. They can have a greenish. Mm-hmm. But I think you have to adapt to the environments. We are going to be in Florida shooting at that beach with sand and sky. So we the need back. to adapt yep. to that. And you said, you're right. Not all green. You know when it's appropriate, but in general, when you look at it, it's all green. Oh yeah. my god! It really, yeah. o- it really overwhelmed me because yeah. it pulled out the the mm-hmm. greenery in the background. Mm-hmm. It pulled out the soul and the essence, and then you have Pacino mm-hmm. come in in the black. And Not Pacino. Just... That's oh, a, a De, Niro. De Niro. De Niro. Sorry, yeah, isn't right. that yeah. such <laughs> a cliche mess up? If they were here, I'll get slapped. That's okay. It's all um, but he comes Two in. Two great in that actors. Black. And it's both lovely to work with. By the right. way, oh, I love that. <laughs> but yeah, the moments, the yeah. moments, the overwhelming green in the moments, and, yeah. and that's my first. But we. We, art, you know, art. Chivo would sit with me with palettes, really? just staring at the wall with different palettes. Like even so cool. in A Little Princess, I mean, the Indian palette is not green. It is orange and yellow. And what orange and what yellow and blue? It then, then you get color. And we would stare. I'd have all these fabrics on the wall mm. in different groupings. And wow. Great Expectation particularly, is it more aqua? Is it yeah, more this yeah. green? Doesn't what it make you miss, I doesn't love, make you miss doing this. Yes. I mean, I, I, I love yeah. working with Alfonso. I love working with Chivo. But I think A Little Princess was a very special um, experience because it was a very low-budget film. Mm-hmm. We really didn't have any money. And the studio didn't particularly want that movie. They wanted a, oh, they wanted an ABC After School special. Of course. Yeah. They wanted something more classic. Mm-hmm. And we had a brilliant producer who I love, Mark Johnson, who protected us. <laughs> you us. Need, yeah, that we, person We have. were so inspired by Alfonso that we wanted to give him the movie he wanted to make, no matter what it took. That feels good when you know you. Yeah, yeah. and we worked together so well, all of us, and it was a joy to go to work every day, even though we had zero, I mean, it was a $15 million film. I remember. Yeah, maybe though. $16 million on a studio yeah, lot, by yeah. the way. We only left the lot once to do World wow. War One. That wow. was it. 
Yeah, I think those yeah. moments in your in, you know in your career where you get to develop those relationships and do the yeah. next one, that discussion just yeah. becomes you know. And your career mm-hmm. sounds like the thread and the connections you know has has mm-hmm. kind of guided you. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the films, Pleasantville. If you guys haven't mm-hmm. seen, and you know the mm-hmm. transition between Pleasantville, Great Expectations mm-hmm. to Marvel. This was a. I saw you give a talk about mm-hmm. the transition of colors and how you had to do this. Yeah. How did you maintain that? Was it originally in color or black and white? The fabrics. Well, when we first started, yeah, none of us. Again, a very low budget film. No, yeah. And Gary Ross, who I had known, he he wrote big, and that was my first film I ever designed. Awesome. So, when he said he wanted to do this, none of us really knew how to do it. Um, so we just started experimenting. At first, we thought we were going to shoot it in black and white. Yeah. And oh, like the whole thing? Yeah. yeah. And oh. then we found when you put color, a c- person in color in a black and white, it has a line. It looks like a cutout and didn't actually work. Mm. So after many tests and many f- color tests, hair tests, fabric tests, oh. we decided it, it was all shot in color and the film was totally desaturated wow. to a slight sepia. Okay. And that way, when you put someone in there in color, they're not jumping out. Yeah. But to do that, yeah. you know, it's probably like the old days. What colors work on black and white and what colors I lear- work I did a black in, and white episode yeah. of Pretty Little Liars, yeah. and I use your speech because yeah. red becomes brown. Oh yeah, God. you have to, yeah. like, you know, I always tell the story that people will probably all know by now, but when we had, um, when Toby wipes <gasps> the makeup off of Joan. Yes. That makeup was green. She was walking around painted green all day because that's what wow. red gray. Right. On and that's camera. what pulls yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was very disconcerting on the set. It took her a while to get used to it. <laughs> People but it, it worked, you know. Mm-hmm. But then there were other things. I mean, it was very early in computer, you know, manipulation right. of your clothes. And I wasn't quite sure, like, there was a certain dress that needed to be blue but I couldn't find the perfect fabric that I wanted but I found a blue gray so I Mm. sat with the lovely young man at the computer because it was basically all done in an office back then you know one guy sitting at a computer Michael I think his name was and oh Michael um, you know (laughs) um, yeah and we turned the dress blue but doing that I lost the yellow flowers they became white but you know it was just um this is the color. It has to be this mm-hmm. color. And mm-hmm. I know because it was so early doing that kind of digital stuff that we, I sat there every frame of the film because often the lighting would turn Joan's hair a different red. Yeah. So I'd have to sit there with him, tone it down, tone it down, tone it up, bring it up, wow. bring it up, put more brown. So it's this how I stuff learned to store it. This is stuff that students have sit. no yeah. idea that But back then through. Gary trusted wow. me. So That was also Gary. Most directors would not do that. He's like, you have to sit with mm-hmm. Michael and sit there. And do that yeah. to make sure every frame that it matches and it's so the you color went from your 12-hour day and then you hang yeah. out with Michael. Exactly. <laughs> Just have a pillow and a yeah, sleeping bag in the, the ground. we'd go valley. We'd have lunch at Patsy's. It was over there you know, <laughs> every day. God. Well, coming you from know. something like this into mm-hmm. your career now, Marilyn, you know all these facts about mm-hmm. X-Men and Marvel. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what they want to hear. Well, that, you know, I was, yeah. I, I was very lucky to fall into that. Um, I think I had done X-Men um, with Brett Ratner a long time ago, and that was my one experience oh, with... Brett Ratner. Yeah, with, mm. with um, a comic book film. And it was very disconcerting to me because I had no idea how to make those clothes or I'd never experienced. And luckily, my assistant, who was my co-designer on that, Lisa Tonchesson, knew way more than I did. <laughs> she had worked wow. more. Yeah. So I, I got her to come to Canada with me and... You know, I had great people making these clothes. So it's Mm -hmm. where I learned how you actually make these kind of clothes. So when I got to Marvel, though, it was very interesting. The Russo brothers (laughs) wanted a comic film, obviously, based on a comic. But they wanted it to look more real. They didn't want big comic booky costumes. They wanted it if the actors walked out in Washington, D.C., nobody would look twice. So tone it down. So they're not, you know, a lot of the clothes I have done for Marvel are not the big glamour clothes because it doesn't work for the movie that they were making. You have to do what works for the film. They're actually very subtle. 
you know, maybe Guardians of the Galaxy isn't quite so subtle, but, you know, they're not big, flashy clothes. Yeah, but Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. the personality is so big, yeah. so it still exactly. matches that. Yeah, I mean, th- those are definitely more, you know. But they are suited you know. for the character. Yeah, yeah. and, you know, yeah. I, that, I came in on the second one, so Alex Byrne had, you know, done a beautiful job on the first one. It was so fabulous. But James wanted to tweak that. He wanted them again to look more mm. real. He wanted them more rock star. Yeah. He didn't want everything so comic. So I guess I get called in when people want it to look more real. Mm. <laughs> you know? So, um, but it was fascinating to try and adapt those and make them, you know, it's they're pants. You know, they're not superhero pants. They're totally. pants. Yeah. They're trousers. I shouldn't say pants because in England it means underwear. But, you know, <laughs> it, you know, trying to make it look more like clothing yeah. instead of big costumes. Um, I, I think it's amazing yeah. what you've done. You've, it's, and it's fun. I mean, I learn so much from the craftsmen I hire. They know way more than I Isn't do. Crazy? And, you know, and always, know. Yeah. the I collaboration know. that we have now, I'm very lucky. I've pretty much had the same team for years and years and years and years. Wow. Um, and wow. so we have a language. We have a dialogue. Yeah, yeah. They know when I like something and when I They don't. can tell the feeling, right? <laughs> yes. Well, you had brought up Harry yeah. Potter earlier. Yeah. Did well, you? that was the joy of my that was her Harry Potter. That was such a joy to get that film. I mean, it was such a fluke. Again, the you really have a process, though. I'm listening to you as you're talking yeah. about each. Well, that one was a bit of a surprise because that I got to do that film. I Harry never Potter thought they would fluke. I, those yeah, two things in yeah. a sentence. You never. <laughs> well, I never <laughs> thought they amazing. would hire an American designer first of oh, all, especially true, one true. who hadn't done a lot of stuff, and. Um, you know, I know that they had interviewed every famous designer on the planet. Mm-hmm. And they, my agent called and said they want to talk to you. Wow. And I'm like, I was doing Spider-Man, actually, the yeah. first Spider-Man. And I had just signed on to that. And I went, well, I can't because I'm doing spider Just go talk to them. They just want to talk to you. Don't. So I go in, and I think the reason they liked it is because I did a little princess. Ah, they kept talking about a little princess. That. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? So, that, that um, we had a wonderful conversation, and as soon as I left, um, they, they told my they agent, said that we want to do it, and I said, but I'm doing Spider-Man. Yeah. So I had to tell Sam Raimi, ask him if I could go do Harry Potter, because it you don't get those opportunities. Back then, particularly American designers, did not mm-hmm. go to mm-hmm. Europe mm-hmm. to oh, do yeah. big fantasy movies. Yeah. And I was in shock. And people, I think, in England or, or Europe were pretty offended that this American girl was coming over there oh, to do this. it still happens today with Canada. Yeah. They're like, yeah. I try to go to Canada. They're but like, I mean, it's you know, such it's, a British book. It's everything yeah. so, about it. And, you know, m- my joy that I got the job was, you know, incredible. My terror of, you know, ruining the book for every child in the world, (laughs) Um, not getting it right, you know, was, you know, and I I guess just diving in again, you just dive into these things, a bit of hubris there, you know, that, okay, I can solve this. But it was absolute terror. And we did, we had some problems in the beginning. It was very short prep. It was only like three month prep. No. Yeah. Luckily, they put a lot of this People get that on little TV end. shows. Yeah. Three months prep. I think I only had about a three months prep. Wow. And I'm in England wow. with nobody except two people I knew. My my yeah. wardrobe supervisor and assistant, Rosemary Burroughs, who worked for Anthony Powell. And <laughs> my friend, Colleen Kelsall, who had worked with me here and worked with Milena. So at least those were the only people I knew over yeah. there. I'd never yeah. done a f- whole film in England. And they found me great people, of course. And I had this wonderful Noel Howard at MVA Costumes who made most of the principal clothes. Wonderful. Um, but in the beginning, trying to figure out what the world was going to be, mm-hmm. um, it was very clear. I met with Joe Rowling only once, and she had written it that they had no uniforms. Oh, really? No. They wore clothes, like on the wow. book, ha- on book cover, American book cover. Every cover around the world has a different Harry Potter, by the way. What would but, Halloween oh, have done well, without the uniforms? Well, <laughs> you know, everybody <sighs> wanted the American book cover. Uh, so they had wizard gowns, but no uniforms. And I was like, I don't know how to control this if we don't have uniforms. Mm-hmm. Because in England, you don't know what kids you're getting for doubles or background. They change them every day. And it's up to the hmm. school to decide who can work that day. Oh, and who yeah, can't. Agent, yeah. So yeah. you don't know who you're even getting. And I'm like... So anyway, we built the Harry Potter costume. We made the rugby shirt Mm. and the jeans and the whole thing and tested it. And I said to Chris Columbus, can I try something else while we're doing this Mm -hmm. test? Because, And everybody looked at it and went, oh, you know. Yeah. Okay. 
It's the cover. So I took him back and put Harry in the uniform we made, and the three kids. Mm. And they walked out and they went, oh, okay. Nailed it. That's oh, it. my gosh. I just got the chills. I'm not even into these movies, they, but they what need, is They done? need to be in uniforms. It, it just is... It said something prettier. It did. You know, it's yeah. basically totally. more magical to Americans. I don't know about to English, but but the uniforms helped. It was it was more sort of um, you know saving my ass basically when and wardrobe. Working. I don't uh-huh. know how to do this but if, it didn't because make sense. you couldn't use any logos on clothes. So if we had to get real clothes for that many children, oh, we would have had to uh, make everything because yeah. you yeah. couldn't have logos. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't even know how to do that. You know, so I'm gonna try something. So anyway, luckily they like it, but getting the wizard gown was very hard. Went through a lot of sketches, and, you know, even at one point, they weren't happy, they weren't happy. And I said to them, are you not happy with what I'm doing? Because, you know, you have a month left, maybe you should replace me. Because <laughs> oh, you're not like the way. And they said, no, we just don't know what we want yet. Isn't that And so that finally, it, they yes. kept saying, it's, it has nothing to do with you. We mm. don't know what we want. That's so finally, we made that. like six or, no, it was more like 11 different twelves of different samples and I said well here's the 11th and I like this one and I put it on Daniel and they all went oh that's it that okay we it. got it the 11th it. by Isn't the 11th yeah. time Isn't but I mean it was really hard to figure out what they were you know and simple and I wanted to make the clothes elegant mm-hmm. I, I really wanted them elegant and we had Stuart Craig who's the most wonderful production designer on earth and you know John Seal shot it and it was so gorgeous and I'm like everything has to be some sort of elegant at that level yeah. even yeah. if it's quirky and weird you know so yeah. and that attracts you know, a bigger uh, the audience and you know, I the had so too. much fun doing it and the ghosts were really hard to do and luckily I had the whole time to do the ghosts because we shot them last because we figuring out what those were all the you know because yeah, we're you know we're you prepping know, nearly yeah. headless yeah. hit Nick and all of that but it it was I had such a good time. I learned so much. It was a different mm-hmm. way of working in mm-hmm. England. But just figuring out who the characters were, I just tried to design them. I read the book as if I was a fan and just designed it how I saw it in my head I love that. from her descriptions. And I did have one meeting with Joe Rowling, just one, half an hour. And I asked her questions such as, um, you know, you say that, um, you know, Dumbledore wears robes. Well, could mean anything so mm-hmm. I showed her some pictures Great. of robes and I said well this is a renaissance so she put a finger and said that type like okay that isn't that the key head. to sometimes show them what they yes. need because well, when they don't yes. get it he helped her translate yes. her thought yeah. and then yes. you know um Madam Hooch I'm like well to me when I read it is she sort of like you know the sort of really tough gym teacher you haven't sc- <laughs> oh yes so I went we should put her in a gym gym uniform like make a wizard costume like a gym I love uniform that. connector and mm-hmm. that's yeah. what it is yeah. you know and then we have you know like a referee's cape she actually i have to say that's one of my favorite costumes in the movie is really? madam hooch because it moved and you know and that was the other part these clothes had to have some sort of movement mm-hmm. and you know snape particularly see i love madam hooch it's a gym uniform head to toe yeah, yeah. yep but it's a wizard yeah you know, she's got her little gym tie I and love her gym her shirt. That, that, and she was fabulous also to work with Zoe Wanamaker. She was so lovely. They were all lovely. But, you know, even um, working with Snape, uh, I'll never forget, it was the funniest thing the first day on the set. He comes in with his robe. Mm. And mm. it was funny. Mm. We were in a fitting. And love. I had these really long sleeves. And... Chris Columbus kept saying to me, the sleeves are too long. He's going to trip over them, trip over them. I said, no, he's not. He's, he's an actor. He just can do yeah, this. Yeah, so yeah. I said something to Alan yeah. in the fitting, and he goes, he took the sleeves and did this grand gesture and wrapped them around his arms, and he, he said, did. trip on them? Some of us have been in a theater. I, I, <laughs> oh, I say when you said that. I worked uh, with and, them. I you know, and him. he made yeah. them work, and it had this peace, long yeah. train. And on the first day on the set, nobody realized it, but he walked away from camera, yeah. and they went, while the camera was rolling, Chris went, it's a snake's tongue. It's forked. <laughs> right when the camera was Right rolling. when it moved. That's yeah, Because they so didn't know I had done that. And it did, if you look closely. Okay. It was so oh. funny. And then he, Alan says his first line to the kids, and in the middle of the take, um, uh, Emma, 
looks up and went, that was really good. <laughs> <laughs> like, it hit her, I mean, everything in the because moment. because Alan turned into Snake. Yeah. He was so amazing. These actors were you know, such yeah. chameleons. I mean, you know, Dame Maggie, all of them were such chameleons and knew how to make this mm -hmm. stuff work. But, you know, they were all very trusting of this little American girl. And they really worked with me. Yeah, and but they, you earned you it. Know, and it was back in the days. I had no illustrator. I just did my little sketches I was going to ask no, if you yeah. did illustrate. Yeah. You know, I brought in an illustrator at one point. Yeah. And Chris kept saying to me, what are those? And he, I said, well, I thought you might want fancier sketches. He goes, I understand your little sketches. They have a movement. They mm -hmm. have a position, how they're standing with their back hunched. I don't need all that stuff. The only time they did it, we did get... Um, uh, an illustrator from the art department to do the Quidditch because they couldn't really understand my little sketch. Right, and it was the same right. exact costume I drew, but they wanted to see it flying. Yeah, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, so... And you adapt was, to people's But the language. rest of the sketches were just... I know, Rosemary Burroughs would lock me in my little flat <laughs> near Selfridges and say, you're Rosemary. not leaving. Rosemary Burroughs, my... Uh, my the customer. Yeah, she was my actually she assistant. She was mine also yeah, when I fa was in England. Isn't she the yeah. best? She was the best. Did and you guys give each other the was... costume or you just happened to work with the no, same person? No, I got her because of Anthony Powell. She used to be oh, Anthony Powell's uh, assistant and uh, wardrobe yes. supervisor. But she's really an, an assistant costume designer and supervisor. Yes. And Rosemary, had, she, oh please, she did, you know, Gladiator. Right. I mean, right. this woman she's was... She's why England took over the world at one point. She's yeah. the most amazing woman on earth. Wow. But she um, would literally say, you're not leaving your flat till you come out with four more sketches. Oh. Today. Got in trouble. She that little five year old that knew yeah. what she wanted to do. And you know, do, I get to trouble. the paper and I'm terrified. And yeah. it takes, you know, <laughs> now I don't even go near it anymore because I have wonderful people who can do it for me, yeah, <laughs> who are I'm better sure. at it. Yeah. But, um, you know, but Chris would say, I, I understand what you're drawing because you have a position. You're, they're hunched over their hands or like little Dickens line drawings. Mm. They look like those drawings from a Dickens novel. And they get used oh, to your and, translation. Yeah. And the actors understand who they are. It's uh -huh. not just a glamour sketch of a clothing, you know. Well, all this information, Marilyn, I think you have mm -hmm. a question from a fan. Mm -hmm. I have a question oh. from a fan. And, and so, questions. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, in Guardians, uh, his name is Colin. Hello, Colin. Okay, fine. Maybe I know Colin. Maybe Colin <laughs> uh, has worked for me before, but he sent in this question. Okay. Uh, in Guardians of the Galaxy, James Gunn, the director, set a particular strong 80s tone to the film. Did that influence any of your de designs in the sequel? Every one of them. Thank you. There's your answer, Colin. Every Thank you very much. Goodbye. Drop the mic. <laughs> Done. Well, J James Gunn is one of the most visual directors I've ever worked with. I just finished The Suicide Squad with him. And James... I wish I had my picture of Harley yeah, Quinn. I, I was have, Harley Quinn for Halloween. Oh, were you? I can't well, even... Harley Quinn is all new in the new one. In the new one. But oh, I'm yeah. talking yeah. about I did the OG yeah. that oh, you did. Yeah. Oh. So she... Uh, so James... Mm. I love working with James. James pushes me to places that I don't want to go. He really does. Yeah, and yeah. in Guardians, he would push me to places. And I don't particularly love the 80s because I lived through it. Isn't that funny? And Isn't that funny? I would Isn't fight funny? it yeah. and finally just go, okay, just go right, with it. Right. And then he would keep pushing me till I got somewhere really interesting mm -hmm. and found what he wanted. He knew And too. he knows what he wants. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't exactly always know how to tell to you. express it. Yeah. But he has vision and it's my job to find out what that yes. is. And I love the challenge so much. With some directors, I don't love that challenge because mm -hmm. I don't actually always believe in them, that they really know what they, what it is. Mm -hmm. But with James, there's something about James that absolutely he has this vision and he knows exactly where he wants to go. And he's pretty much always right. Wow. You That's know, why you trust you know, him and he I, I absolutely you. trust. I mean, once in a while I'll say something like, hmm, and then he'll get Yeah, but I guarantee he, goes, he likes that I about hate, you. I hate when she's right. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, because <laughs> right? she did tell me that. Yeah. But I love working with him. And besides, he's really nice to work with. He's a lovely man. He, but he really, I, I like the challenge. Well, I think, and I don't like the challenge from all directors. Yeah, because I, as I said, I don't always mm -hmm. trust them. Mm -hmm. I absolutely trust James Vision. I mean, I thought the first Ga Guardians of the Galaxy was one of the most beautiful films I'd ever yeah. seen. I, yeah. I was blown film. away yeah. by it. So when I got to do the second one. I was like, wow. That's See, that's, those are from the first. That's the first. That's the first I one. Think. Is it? What a clever. That must home? be the first one. I can't remember. 
because I don't remember Zoe in that costume. I'm sorry. I'm just distracted by yes. muscles. Uh, yes. Yeah. Focusing. <laughs> yeah, the bustles. <laughs> <laughs> What's there, do we have yes. another question from a guest, mm -hmm. Marilyn? Oh, gosh. How do, uh, yeah. Aww, how did Chris Pratt's so nice. That's good what to hear. Are. That's good to hear. You know, they were all nice. I love to hear they're, that. You know, they're all was nice. Was Groot Look. nice? I never met Groot. <laughs> But my, my favorite was definitely uh, Rocket. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, yes. Because oh, yes. he yes. always showed up yes. at his fittings on time and never complained. <laughs> was that, was that, is that the that's, fox? That's that the, the fox. Yes. I love that. That's why we love animals. But we had to make <laughs> the costume. Raccoon. No, yeah. I know. the rac yeah. I was, gonna, yeah. I was, I was doing we, the hand we, gesture that, of the that raccoon. Is, that's a life-size maquette of him, and we made the costume. Those are actually, they're not CG. Those are real. I mean, the character CG, but we had to actually build those costumes. And I think that's why we love dogs and cats, because they don't talk back. Yeah. We love that. Rocket <laughs> lived in my office in a little box. Oh. Like, they let me live, let let me have the maquette, and he <gasps> just stayed in my office and so, lived oh, in wow. a box. Just a little box right yeah. there. And I liked him, like having a friend. Yeah, exactly. We <laughs> and the same sometimes. with Baby Groot. We <gasps> actually made Baby Groot, the little oh, tiny one in his little Ravager costume. I can't. That is too much cuteness for a minute. Scale, right? <laughs> Dorothy Bulak Erickson, who's genius, she actually made, made that the little, all yeah, to scale, yeah, yeah, the zipper, yeah. everything's oh to scale. God. And it really is tiny. And there were only two of them Who made with that? the clothes. The clothes were made by, well, the, the, the maquette was made by Legacy FX, but the, the clothes were made by Dorothy Bulak Erickson, who works with me often, one of the many fabulous people. But she, literally, everything's made to scale. We had to print the fabric to scale. See, so all you like a little amazing. listeners, yeah. it's not, everything's yeah. not CGI, everything, no, everything no, still, oh, so, I and I, I don't that. know where the two are that are dressed. I think Kevin Feige has one, and I don't know where the other one is, because if anything, I wanted a little, I was just gonna, I do have a Groot, I have a little baby Groot <laughs> that was given to me <laughs> from Legacy, but he's not dressed. But he's not, the, no. no, he doesn't have there your only costume two, on. Two costumes. Um, how, how was it for yeah. you to get into the technical aspect of some of these costumes? I mean, you know, you're a designer, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you have a vision mm -hmm. of what you'd like. Right. But then this story and the script and the action changes a lot of the... It does. I mean, it's, you know, there, there were certainly sequences in the, when I was designing in the bin, beginning that I had a different vision mm -hmm. for. And again, James pushed me to something else. Um, the gold world, not the gold particularly, I mean, Aisha, that was us. We designed it, Gloria. She illustrated that in my shop. But um, the um, pilots and all the stuff in that world, I wanted something way different. And mm -hmm. the and the um, townspeople and James wanted something so simple and so right. different. He wanted, you know, Flash Gordon. Right. Uh, and so, yeah. okay, how do I do that so I like it and he's happy? That's the key. And that's, again, a challenge. That and, is And so at first I was just like fighting it and fighting it. And then I went, he's so right. Mm -hmm. He's so right, you know, that I just need to, you know, we always want to make it more elaborate, more right. elaborate. And, you know, it's, oh, it's like, you know, it's a court. It could be so right. elaborate. And he's like, I don't want that. But I love that, too, when you yeah. get to see the final product, and yeah. that's where you connect that it relationship. Works. And also, it it's having a very close relationship with production designers. That's what I was just I mean, and hair and makeup, yeah. you know, and I have a very close rela relationship with Legacy FX. I work really yeah. closely yeah. with them, or whoever I'm working with. Yeah. If it's, you know, it could be any of those houses, I'm there. I, I, love, just, I love the hands on I do not yeah, hand it, it over to anyone no, and just say, make this mm -hmm. from this sketch. Mm -hmm. You have to be involved. Mm -hmm. And you have the knowledge yeah. of it. Yeah, know. I mean, and, and a lot of times you learn as you go because the techniques change every six months. Don't you love when a tailor well, gives you, you know, like a It's constantly way. changing, and, you know, you can't really get too stuck. Certain, sometimes old-fashioned techniques work a lot better than new ones. Uh -huh. Like, sometimes you just go back to old-fashioned silk screen, you know, um, and it works better than trying to sublimate or, you know, it depends on what you're doing. But, um, you know, you have to just... Use everything. You have to experiment. Well, you've got your Every tool movie's kit, different, right? You have everything your tool you kit, but I find each film changes. She, she you know? gets familiar with her producers and directors, yeah. and it becomes mm -hmm. a family affair. Mm -hmm. It does. And, I mean, I've been lucky on the Marvel movies. I mean, four of them were with the same team. Were they? Team. Oh, that's, yeah, that's great Yeah, to same know. directors, wow. same everybody. Oh, look at your little body of work. Just oh, some, yeah, yeah, I mean, and many more. You yes, know, and it's also, on. well, actually, that, that Hunger, Hunger Games, Games is Trish's. Me. That one's Trish's. Oh, got it. That picture. You did the first one. I did the first. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah I did yeah, the yeah, first, yeah. and Trish did the second. Lovely job. Yeah, but um, you did a first. Is that the second, or is that even the third, the curtain bar? 
third and fourth. I don't oh, Kurt and Bart. Yeah, yeah. That's they did the third team too. Yeah, they all yeah, did yeah, a great yeah. job. They moved yeah. on, and it was great. Um, you set, you but, set a you know, bar, man. You really you. did. She that, did. Another one, another movie with no money, by the way. Trying to do that on no money was not fun. Which that was one? not fun. Great. Uh, Ackerlin didn't do the first one. Who did? The, who directed who? the first one? Gary Ross. Got it. Yeah. And then, oh my Who's God. She has yeah. yeah, a very long a relationship. Very relationship. Who I did Sea Biscuit with, which I also love. That Sea Biscuit. When that came out, I was working mm. at a movie theater. Yeah. <laughs> I will never oh, forget. Oh, how funny. It was earlier it's sold in your out. career, too. Wasn't Sea Biscuit? No, Sea Biscuit was sort of. She looks at me because no. I'm a stalker. Well, it was in 1943. After <laughs> it was after. Did you get an award for that? That's the. I mean, I got a costume design guild and, a, and an Oscar nom for that. It. That's that. That, but that was after Pleasantville. It was. That was after Pleasantville. Okay. But Seabiscuit was a lot of fun. That was huge. That was just. It was. It was huge. Epic. But so, I remember the just. Great, I mean, that's. Those are the kind of films I actually thought I'd be doing, like big period movies. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. didn't. I never thought I would be doing superhero movies and I remember <laughs> being a little yeah. arrogant when I was younger saying well I never want to do a movie with a number after it unless it's like Henry VIII oh, you know oh, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. you know I don't want to do uh, you know Guardians 2 but you know what yeah. it's a challenge when you have a, a first one and then you come in and you kind of go with the world but then you make it your own world and you know we all learn from who did it before mm -hmm. nobody just comes in I love that I mean I we love all learn from Bob Ringwood that. Bob Ringwood yeah. was the king of it all right. oh, Bob, Bob Ringwood was the genius of it all yeah. none of these costumes on would superhero been. movies mm -hmm. would True. look like they're looking True. for if Bob Without Ringwood Bob Ring. hadn't invented what we do he had oh genius incredible reputation yeah and but I mean he and literally reinvented how costumes are made he he with sculpting and mm -hmm. all these new techniques he 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 is the king i hope people uh, mm -hmm. literally mm -hmm. students that are listening mm -hmm. the people that uh Juliana has talked about mm -hmm. This is an experience, this is an education on its own mm -hmm. because we were around, you know, you have the new students going, right. who, 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 look them up, research them because no, you have right. a huge designer saying that they yeah. influenced That's you interesting. so I, much. I talk to a lot of students now and I say, well, who are your heroes? And yeah. they look at me and they don't have any. It's and I'm like, hard. you really, you have everything open to you. But that's, on Netflix, but that's why. whatever. That's why. And it's too much. You it's know, too much. It's too much. I, I, I it's agree. Way it, is, too much. it is too much. Yeah. But, I mean, you have to have your heroes mm, and really I study it and see what they do. I mean, I have many heroes. I mean, my when I first started, the thing that set, there were two. I saw the leopard. And I went. Oh insane. my God! You know, yes. oh, we've been film. talking about that recently. Oh. I mean, I, I I would have to say that most designers, particularly my generation, yeah. um, <laughs> when they say, "What is your favorite movie?" It's got to be The Leopard. I actually had Eric yeah. Damon who did mm -hmm. Gossip Girl. Yeah, uh, and that mm -hmm. we started referencing it, yeah. and I was just like, "Wow, yeah. that was just." But also, that was, when I was, I don't know how old I was, young, <laughs> saw <laughs> Romeo and Juliet the Zeffirelli, and mm -hmm. saw those clips, and yeah. I went, "Wow, that's what I yeah. want to do." That's the movie costumes I want to do, mm. the, the Visconti mm -hmm. and that. So that's what I thought I'd be doing. But, you know, somehow I like the challenge of doing superhero movies. I mean, I'm happy my next film is not a superhero movie. <laughs> were you working when all this went down? We were very lucky on Suicide Squad. We, I got home on March 1st, <laughs> so we had finished the film. Oh, so fine. we got very lucky. Um, the but Suicide Squad too. Two, yes. So well, you work with my boyfriend, Joel. Tell Kinnaman? him I said hi, but Joel you know Kinnaman? whatever we talk on the phone. Sure. Joel, which one? Kinnaman. Kinnaman. No, I don't. He's so so he's my boyfriend up here. Well, <laughs> you, you got good taste. He's such a lovely man, and they oh. were all Margot Robbie. Everybody's so great, mm. and it's a total reboot. It's nothing like the other film. Yeah. Um, but um, my next film, surprisingly, is not a superhero film. I'm working with the Russo brothers again, again. from, and they're doing a political spy thriller with Ryan Gosling Good. and Chris Evans. So we will be doing. I'll better to be Gray Man. They're coming yeah. from them. Well, they're they want to go back to what we tried to do on the Winter Soldier, which was more of a political thriller. Superhero film is a political thriller. And I remember when I interviewed with them, I said, oh, one of my favorite films of all times, you know, is a, is a political thriller. And he goes, well, that's what we want to do, mm, real, mm -hmm, even mm -hmm. though it's Captain America. Yeah. Yeah. So they've always wanted to do that. And I was very happy when they called and said they were doing this. And I'm like, oh. wow. And then I have to go back to Guardians of the Galaxy 3. <laughs> wow, no. so you're booked yeah. for the next. This is great. Yeah. Marilyn, you're well, so lucky you got her in here yeah. right well, now. You know, who knows? You. you know, with COVID, who knows if these dates will stay? Yeah. And, right. You know, yeah. but that's the plan. But like I said, I'm have I, I love doing the superhero movies. I love the challenge. I like 
I like that I have to learn new things on every film. Mm -hmm. You can't just rely on what you did the film before. I love that you're not jaded. There's a lot of, you know, mm -hmm. people that just well, shop it, walk away. I, this is really inspiring. Both of you are not no, jaded I mean, about no. this business. No, I'm, if you ask people, I'm, I'm a control freak. But I also, I what have... There's I have an incredible that. crew, and I seem to work with the same people all the time. So I put more trust in them now than mm -hmm. I can walk away from mm -hmm. stuff that I would totally. never walk away totally. from before. But I you nothing goes on system. camera that you, I don't. When you know each system, other, you know. You know what, I mean, yeah. you know, extras, hair, everything. The hair people are like, yeah. <laughs> always in everybody's face. But that's but good when you know, know I get in everyone's face, well, too. Well, but you have, to, you have to be involved. A person is not just a frock with a hairdo mm -hmm. that someone else does the hairdo. Yeah, you're you. creating a Thank whole character. You. So, like, when I do a fitting, often I have the hair and makeup makeup people come and we do it all together and then you can so that the whole you, you can't just like do a frock and then suddenly they come out of the hair i've had that happen where they come out of the trailer and like what is that on their head mm -hmm. it's not the right it's period not it's not the right it's not it separate. doesn't go with mm -mm. what they're in you know you have to you know and then when you work there are some wonderful hair and makeup people right. and you get to work with those it becomes Isn't this collaboration yeah. you know but if the hair and makeup isn't right, you're, you might as well go home. You're not I mean, kidding. You know, thank you for thank you for yeah. saying that because yeah. it is a whole picture. Well, when you start it's in theater, opera, difficult. ballet, you design the whole thing. No mm. one else is, you know, you design from right, head to foot. Right. So when you start in theater, you're designing from head to foot. Wow. So I don't understand. You know, in Europe, you kind of do yeah. that, but here, it, I think it developed from old Hollywood when it was black and white and the. Makeup and hair work. It did. With the it DP. did. One and, and that's one what I it did was. was pretty but, Woman. I yeah. had to. Yeah. We had color tests, fabric color, every yeah. the but what it's lenses rare. they were going to but use. But it's rare to get that. Uh, and the cameraman. And my favorite I'm not polka dot dress. Any names, mm. but that polka dot dress. Sorry. Polka I always, dot. Oh, I love that polka oh, dot that, dress. Oh, that pretty woman. piece of fabric <laughs> that was all that was left. It made a great dress. Uh, Wait, what? What is the story about a piece of fabric that I don't know about? Um. I thought I knew well, everything about you, Marilyn. Not talking about me today. No, but, but I love no, that. No, I knew she got excited. No, but we all have inspirations, and ah. I remember seeing that movie, and it not just you know the first time you see, you know, see her, and you see, but that polka dot dress just because it was so appropriate mm. for the the time and place in the movie. It was so. It's about the appropriateness. And it's I not about being a big glamorous in the costume. Of of um, Beverly Silks and oh, Woolens. Don't we miss that? He wow. let me, and mm -hmm. it was just enough to make mm -hmm. a midi length mm -hmm. dress. Such a good. Dress. So we tested mm -hmm. on most people. Best, yeah. that yeah. Like to you the floor. know, yeah. And she's got narrow shoulders, <laughs> yeah. so I had to cut it a certain. You know, you really have to work with the body. Well, I you just, do. Yeah, she's on camera. Mm -hmm. I mean, every exactly. minute. It, it has to work, you know. Well, let me tell you, it worked. It, de it, <laughs> it definitely worked. worked. It worked. But, but we tested to see if she should have it shorter. Mm -hmm. Then she would wear right. the Chanel little heel. And mm -hmm. if it was the ballet length, she'd wear the Chanel flat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just, uh, again, it's the appropriateness for the scene. Mm. It didn't take and, you out of it either. It made you appreciate yeah. that scene yeah, that much more. Yeah, and it's also, like, I try and tell young students, it's not about clothes necessarily the clothing part is the last thing we do it's the meetings that go before the clothes mm. you know the research that you do mm -hmm. then you have all this research and then i say take all that research and throw it away mm -hmm. and then what's in your head remains what you've actually retained yeah. from the research then you have the meetings with this you know it's then, then, and then, then. The hair and makeup and then you start then. making the clothes mm -hmm. the clothes yeah. are like the last step you know yeah or even if you're doing a superhero, the amount of R and D that right, I do, right. of dying, of printing, of oh, you yeah. know, oh, yeah. how do we do this? What technique it's, am I going to use? You know, has the amount of R and D? You know, you're lucky to get the costume made because you're doing R and D. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, Marvel's very nice; they give you enough time to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, not everybody gives well, you Marvel that amount of time. Money. Just, you well, know. they also understand what it takes. Yeah. I will give them. Kevin Feige understands how difficult it is to make these clothes. Mm -hmm. And you get the time to do it. And like on Captain America, we actually started the suit that's at the end of the movie that we call it the scale suit because okay. it's more like the comic and has scales. We actually started a scale suit on, on Infinity War, Civil War. 
Oh, on another movie entirely. On well, Captain yeah, the, the second one. Captain America film wow. before we got to the two. I can't keep up. We with started it. it. Everybody wanted the comic, <gasps> and we didn't have enough time. And we were R and Ding and R and Ding. And Kevin came to me and said, "I think we should do this in a later film. Let's not do it for this because you don't have enough time to perfect it." I wasn't happy, and to have. I have a studio come and tell you that, yep. and and me go thank you because I want it to be perfect. So literally, the R and D for that suit took years. Was a movie. <laughs> it yeah, was like it a took years. Wow. Yeah, to get it so perfect and working, uh, Ryan Minerding, who is you know one of their, the head of concept there, okay. working you know to get that scale and mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. have it work on a body. We went through, I can't. We made it over and over and over and over again till. We finally got it, and we all stood in the fitting room and went, we wow. got it. You nailed you know, it after this. Yeah. You know, but it, and to have it not look weird and costumey, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it literally started four mo the three previous. movies before. Wow. That Well, it's so interesting mm -hmm. because all, with all the superhero shows, mm -hmm. it's gotten so heavy where a lot mm -hmm. of the TV shows, they just have one designer just doing yeah. That is there a specific place that you it's a go to for that fabric? It, you know, to, do you have well, we've learned certain fabrics work and certain things don't. Right, right. So, I know a certain fabric will die and take the print mm, the way yeah, I want course. it to do, and yeah. will have movement. But often that company will then change how they make it, and suddenly it doesn't work anymore, and you're back to square one trying to find, yeah. or you can't get enough of that fabric. Mm. Oh, isn't that nice? I know you know, you're, you're you like, know, I should have got it when I could have. <laughs> yeah, but, well, it's also you, uh, the time it takes even to manufacture it. Do I have I'll enough time mm -hmm. to have that lead in time for four it's months? It's just not hanging it. up in a closet when you go? Yeah, exactly. No, we go to the, like I used to say on Harry Potter, we'll just go to the wizard section at Harry's. <laughs> yeah. No, I love that. When yeah. people say, why can't yeah. you? You'll just. Or you'll... as Rosemary Burroughs said, I'll just go knit that for you. Yeah. <laughs> wow, we're getting but, to the you end. You know, it's oh, so sure. funny. Yeah, we're getting oh, no. to the end. I want you I to stay. Okay. This is fine. <laughs> I want to, first of all, yes. uh, Marilyn's going to find out all your information, where people can find you okay. or what you're coming up next. Um. Mm -hmm. I want to thank Eddie Marks with Western Costume. He always. has a, a, yes always. always for, I just want to thank him for always. being alive. Number yes. one, we um, love Eddie. Very yeah. generous. He is uh, his rag van rentals costume trailers. Mm -hmm. So not only has he tackled Western costume for mm -hmm. all of our needs, and now he's got are. the rag van. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to have to move in there pretty yes. soon. Probably be nice than than studio. Studio. Yeah. So thank you for us. sponsoring mm -hmm. the show, Eddie. Mm -hmm. And you know, thank you, well, Eddie. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. awesome. Look at those jockey boxes. I have to say, all of us are supported by a lot of the businesses in this. You know, in LA. I have found that. And, wow, you know, we couldn't do what we recently. do. Even on big budgets, we need a favor. We do. Yes, Often. We do. And Every these time. people are very generous with well, us. Well, I think that also comes from and very your, kind. your reputation, too. Yeah. It's how we When I did ourselves. a little Bible movie, a mm -hmm. $1 million film with yeah. you and McGregor. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I did. In the desert with a crew of like four. Eddie did me a big favor and he made the clothes for me. Yeah. Eddie. No Eddie. money as a favor. Right, he just, right. I couldn't have done the movie if he didn't dive in and help us. And this is, that's what happened. You know, we had limited money and I yeah. said, here's how much. He said, how much do you have? He goes, okay, we'll do it for you. Isn't that Eddie? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that Tom? Yeah. When I did so the Breakfast I thank you Club, very much. Eddie took the Breakfast Club to mm -hmm. Chicago for me while I was mm -hmm. doing another one or mm -hmm. two films in Chicago. At four at the time. <laughs> <laughs> at the, yeah. I don't care who yeah. she's with. Yeah. I want, jo you know, Aww. some of my producers that I was with one so great. for 17 years. Yeah. I did, I mean, 17 films. Wow. wow. That, that's a record. And then that's impressive. In 21 with another one. Wow. That's even more impressive. It's crazy. Wow. It's absolutely crazy. But we'll talk about mine another time. You I want to I would like to be here when we talk about it. <laughs> when yours. I interviewed okay. her, I was just like okay. this. Okay. We'll so interview great. me. Okay. But you <laughs> uh, uh, it's amazing. Well, I thank you for inviting me. I, I still mm -hmm. I want a second part. Okay. We, we only need for part you. two. I mean we only As I did. say only, only for Maryland. Yeah, because I don't what I like yeah, yeah. doing these things. I, I don't her. talk yeah. that much. I just like to keep in the background, but for Marilyn, there was no way I was going to say no. Thank Absolutely. You, Thank and you especially so you're near my house. So this is right near my house. Perfect. So you didn't have to go that far. <laughs> no, this has uh, been, I'm, I'm so thankful. So this. This I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. Surprisingly. You so much. Oh my God. Thank you so you're much. You're welcome. And for all the students out there, watch lots of old movies and study them. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And you don't yes. do, because a lot of people, mm -hmm. where can we find her? Where can we mm -hmm. find her? Social media, no. I don't Got do it. social media. Great. Sorry. You know where they can find her? Go, when the movie theaters open up or exactly. whenever it drops, you can find her work. Exactly right. Right? 
Yes. Great. I'm around. Great. I mean, I, I, I mean, it's you. You know, I, I teach it. At, I don't teach, but I have yeah. guessed it, you know, at um, and uh, at UCLA. I was the uh, Swarovski chair last year. Really? So did I'll you? go to talk to students. Yeah, that was fun, by the way. They did Pleasantville mm. as their project. Mm. Very See, good. See, people do yeah. know about it. And I've actually had two of, my, two of my uh, crew have come from UCLA, yeah. oh, that's um, you that's know, cool. and from other schools, too, but uh, Yale. But I I have plucked a few out of UCLA. So, you know, knowledge is everything. Mm -hmm. Study, yeah. even if you're not in school, just love film. Study film. That's on yeah. my dating just app. Watch. I'm not kidding you. On my dating Lee, app, must love put film. Put Turner Classic movies <laughs> on and just kidding. leave it on all day. That's, you know. Yes. Oh, have it in the background. Yes. Yeah, just you leave know, it on. Also, also yeah. yeah. <gasps> I mean, it's so, your stories mm -hmm. to for each you know, I started mm -hmm. thinking about mm -hmm. myself, and when mm -hmm. I get to tell you about me, I can't wait. I'm gonna get into it, okay? <laughs> Good. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> because, oh my God. I mean, the other thing I like Work to tell students, I know we're finishing out. up, is that, That's great. you know, most costume designers, we all like each other a lot. Mm -hmm. a I lot, have found you know, that more because than we not. all understand what we do. And, yeah, it may seem competitive, but, you know, if you're good, you're gonna work, mm -hmm. you know, but, we all learn from each other. Yeah. I mean, the one good thing about Marvel, it's the only films I've ever gotten to. I actually work with the other designers from the other films because you often have to use their That's clothes. That's right. You have to Or them. adapt yeah, their yeah, clothes yeah. or they have to use mine. So you can't be so territorial about it. You have yeah. to be generous and work with them. And I learned so much from Alex Byrne, mm. you know. I worked with I work with Ruth, uh, Maez, they all call. Kim mm -hmm. Barrett's doing one now. Mm -hmm. How does this work? And I call them. We all learn from each other. And you don't get that on a lot of other films. No, I, it's you well, know, and it's the part aspect. I like yeah. that I get yeah. to deal with other designers, not just all the craftsmen. Mm -hmm. And no, that's cool. so that that's another aspect of why Marvel is fun to do. And oh, DC, I just did cool. DC. That was fun too. <laughs> Are you allowed to say them together at the same time? No, I don't know. Same work, director I like, and actually a lot of the same crew. So wow. I would say so. I just love that you yeah. got to work with, and that's another mm -hmm. testament. You have your own mm -hmm. crew. You have the crew that comes back, like yeah. that, you know, Very the reputation. Well, well, well they become working. your family, you know. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you're with people 18 hours well, a day. All of our faces <laughs> go like this. <laughs> you know, 18 <laughs> hours a day often. So, you know. Exactly. You have to yeah. like them. <laughs> well, yeah. I could watch you guys for 18 hours a day just talking uh, about your past, literally. I mean, well, now we have been... to, I have to hear your past, too. This See, so, this is oh, like, oh, she, oh, we need reciprocity here. We need to come back. Yeah. So that, that, there's but exactly. she's got the contemporary thing under control. Hey, that's okay. You but know? no one knows. We all started so. with contemporary. No, it's better than, okay, yeah. she's amazing. It's fun, but yeah. people forget. They sometimes put you in a niche, and they're like, can you do edge? Can you do this? And I was like, well, I came from sci-fi. Well, there you I go. came from sci-fi, yeah. so you she know that's you just have to. Yeah, but you still, contemporary is... You there know, you're you creating one. characters, and at one point we will watch them, and they will be period. Yeah. So you know, you when know. they say vintage, yeah. I'm like vintage. Oh, I, was and I know. I love yeah. when they say I'm doing a period piece. It's 2000. It's does, and, and I'm like, really? That's so embarrassing. I know. <laughs> but contemporary, mm -hmm. you can't do fashion on the nose for the time because the film no, comes can. out, mm -hmm. and it's dated. You, TV is different, yeah. but a film doesn't come out sometimes till two years. I've used yeah. her work as my presentation. Yeah. I posted yeah. last night. Yeah. One of my yeah. most famous characters was bounced yeah. off of Judd oh, Nelson oh. from her. And I was See, like, I have to say, great. even when I'm doing contemporary, I don't think about fashion. I, it, it doesn't mean yeah. anything. Well, they it. ask us. You know, what it's because are, I don't. It's it's, it, well, it's also a different world now. Yes. But mm. I just have never thought in those terms because I'm creating a character and telling right. a story. And it's not. I don't care what yeah. a label is or Thank who's you. gonna Thank you know you. wanna we sell it later. It's not you know, they can do whatever they want after the movie's over. There's red cards yeah. for that. Not, I don't that's but, it, you know. it's, but it's not my job. It's not it, that is not what I do. Mm -hmm. So sadly, that's why yeah. it's a different. But it's a different I've world now. I think people have to think about other stuff. Problems with yes and no. Die Hard, and because oh, yeah. I said I have to shop in yeah. Europe. Yeah, you don't have anything here for these terrorists to right. look like they. Well, should I put a sweatsuit exactly. on? You know, what well, do I do? See, now it's easier because the internet. I had to mm -hmm. shop. Yeah. yeah. Now but you can get stuff from Europe. You know, but back kidding. then I remember no, if you, you needed workwear you for a Bauer, Polish somebody, you, you know, you couldn't get no that. access to any of that. You know, you'd huh? have to go. They needed yeah. a look. All of them, they needed <laughs> different looks, and it was yeah. a really an amazing experience. Yeah. I mean, there's so many good things that have happened, and also things that I think are not helpful. Well, they're not in there. And no. Yeah, that. Yeah. I agree. But, you know, the technology has helped to a certain degree that you can get stuff. But even when you're doing research, 
you can't just research on the internet. Mm, you no. got to get books. You got to do magazines. You got to do a go lot to the of, library. Yeah. Go to the library. I tell my intern, too, like, we'll do photos. And, mm -hmm. and I said, you have to remember this is this generation. Where do they get this character? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just from the neck up. This is not, it's not about the wow mm -hmm. factor back then. It was about what was written. Right. These are the words. It's and not what just world our... do they live in? Thank you. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's all about, you know, I once judged the, when they used to have a union exam. They had to design. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. I can't remember. Okay. What, what, Oedipus? In three different periods, which is stupid anyway. Oh, but, it... you know, I mean, that's. <laughs> <laughs> but I what? said, so they had to do the king, the queen, and a couple characters. So I'd ask them, what does the rest of this world look like? And universally, the answer was, but I didn't have to do those. And I said. I wasn't told. Yep, I wasn't told. Well, you can't just do those. You have to know what the whole world is. <laughs> Well, this whole yeah. world, it's unfortunately, so yeah. is ending mm -hmm. yes. right now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, is there anything before we wrap up? That No, thanks for yes. listening, whoever was. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. she's not doing social media. Where no. do we find no. you, Marilyn, We're besides? MarilynVance.com, mm -hmm. yeah. Marilyn Vance, uh, Designing Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And uh, your Designing Hollywood yes. podcast? Okay. Yeah. Right? Well, I just said that mm -hmm. podcast. Yes. Okay, so mm -hmm. we have five. I only have one. No, <laughs> I feel so boring. No, uh, well, so I'm, I have, bor I'm boring. I have none. Uh, your resume. But that's a choice. That's a choice. That, uh, Designing uh, Hollywood. I, I am very Facebook. private on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> yes. No. No. I love yeah. that. It's just Mandy yeah. Line. My name yeah. out there. You'll find it. Yeah. Um, I am also. I dropped a podcast today, and then I have my Instagram live show that's kind of slowing down, oh, but cool. still out there. So. I'm super grateful. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. You would. Oh, I love you. I love you. <laughs> you got to come fun. back, and we got to do that. I, but I want to be here when you talk. Okay. I'm not kidding. You think I'm kidding? No. <laughs> Will you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Seriously. Okay. Interviewing her was one of my favorites. I bet. It was one of my favorites. Well, she 